Recently, I've been experimenting with Super 8 film, but it's so expensive, about 60 quid for every three minutes of recording. So I thought, let's set up my Canon T3i right next to the Super 8, and then we can see if we can make digital look like film. Now, with anything like this, we get the best results when we start in camera, rather than leaving all the work to the computer. So let's treat our digital camera as if it were a Super 8 camera. First up is the aspect ratio. I gaffer taped the edges of the screen, estimating the shape of a 4x3 frame. Now we have a decent idea of what it will look like when we crop the footage later. Next we can open our menu and turn off the dead giveaway of digital footage, which is in-camera sharpening. See the difference between the rough, contrasted edges compared to the much smoother, more organic look without the sharpening. I also installed CineStyle, which is a free pitch style that can help make the most of the camera. Now, we don't want to be shooting at 30 frames a second. Either 24 or 18 is what we'd expect from a Super 8 camera. Now, since it's quite bright outside, I used a fast shutter speed, which is never going to happen with Super 8. See how the movement becomes very choppy without any motion blur? For a filmic look, we typically double the frame rate and use that as our shutter speed. So 24 frames becomes 1 48th or 1 50th, or we can use 1 40th if we're going for the 18 frames a second look. Now this has introduced another problem, which is that digital cameras don't handle highlights very well. Ideally, we'd want to avoid any white hotspots. So let's fix the exposure by cranking down our aperture to f9.9, which is quite convenient actually, since Super 8 cameras have a deeper depth of field than most modern cameras. So without getting too mathematical, we should probably avoid wider apertures like f2.8 or f4 if we're going for that authentic Super 8 look. Now we've got that slower shutter speed, the axe movement is a lot smoother, with motion blur, which looks more film-like. And finally, we could get rid of the tripod. Although Super 8 cameras do have tripod mounts, they are most associated with the handheld look. So we're now ready to finish the job in post. Let's start with the 4x3 crop. If the whole project is going to be Super 8 styled, it makes more sense to create a 4x3 project, so it'll display correctly on all monitors. But if some of the project needs to be widescreen, like this for example, then it makes more sense to search for a 16x9 aspect ratio overlay, and you can get a whole pack of different overlay images to drop on top of your footage. So here's the digital shot on the right, and the real Super 8 on the left. Let's see if we can match them. First up is grain. Now, there are plenty of places you can get different film grains. I use the ones that come with Film Convert, and I set it to 150% which seems to match. But grain rarely looks any good after YouTube's compression, so I often can't use it. Now, to match the color, I ended up increasing the highlights and the midtones a fair amount, because Super 8 footage is often quite washed out. Then I consistently noticed a fair amount of saturation, particularly in the shadows, which I then boosted quite a lot. Comparing his shirt, we can see that we need a bit of magenta in the shadows, and plenty in the midtones to match the skin countering it with a bit of green in the highlights. Lastly, I added a blur of four pixels since Super 8 is not hugely detailed. Now, beyond that, we could always conform it to 18 frames a second, add scratches by individually drawing them, we could add that jitter effect, we could even duplicate the footage and put it right at the top edge for even more authenticity, but to be honest, you might wanna just save some time and buy a Super 8 emulation for that kind of stuff. But one thing that's free, and will really help to seal it all together is sound. Just finding a Creative Commons recording of an eight mm projector and running that behind the clips makes a huge difference. It really feels like we're watching an old wheel that we've just dug out of the attic. So usually I'd say that what camera you decide to use really doesn't matter. But when it comes to the Super 8 look, it's a bit different since it carries so much nostalgia from being used in so many old home movies. I think it could be a really useful tool for flashback scenes, dream sequences, music videos, commercials, or even a whole film if it feels right for the project. On the screen now are some classic examples of films that have used Super 8 in some way or another. But I would just say this, no matter how much we try and fake the film look, 
It's never going to be as perfectly imperfect as real film. But the nice thing about doing it this way is that you can pick and choose which features you use. Maybe you like the Super 8 colour, but still want widescreen. The scratches, but without the grain. That's the real benefit of faking it. Well, that and the fact that you can save on the price of these things. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next week.